Throughout our history, 150 plus years marked by teaching, research, and engagement, we have been driven by a purpose greater than ourselves. Our purpose, our reason for being, is to serve. To serve the people of Indiana and beyond. Hardworking men and women from big cities, small towns, and rural communities, different circumstances, and promising futures. We trace our worthy charge to a defining moment in our country's history, July 2nd, 1862. Among the darkest days of the Civil War, President Lincoln signed a bill to preserve the industrial spirit of a divided union. The Morrill Act gives over one million acres of federal land to endow at least one university in every state. Born from an idea so uniquely American, these universities are not meant to be exclusive to the wealthy or elite. They are for all. They are to teach applied subjects like agriculture and the mechanic arts, and they are to share their knowledge far beyond campus borders. Upon our founding in 1869, Purdue University represents a new era in education for all. Our first graduate, John Bradford Harper, puts it into these words. Who dares to place a limit on the human intellect? Who dares to say when the search for truth in this world shall end? For decades to come, Purdue University opens doors to the instigators of progress. Instigators of discoveries, patents, companies, life-saving drugs, works of art, world food, and Nobel Prizes. The list goes on and on and on. Like our commitment to those we serve, a community with educational needs that grows and changes over time. We open regional campuses, freeze tuition, take instruction online, and reinvent high school. We continue to reimagine accessible education for the 21st century, and our service is no longer contained within red brick exteriors. Why? Because the people, our nation, still need us, today as they did in 1862. And we can do more. We can serve more. 40 million Americans have some college credit and valuable life experience, but no degree. First-generation students, working adults, active military, and veterans. Many share the same dreams and drive that define Purdue. For them, West Lafayette is not the answer today. They need something else, something they can trust and be proud of. For them, our answer is new yet ever true. Purdue Global. To them and to all we serve in West Lafayette and around the globe, we offer an invitation, a chance, an opportunity to dream big again and take the small steps that will move us all forward. Because if not us, who? We are Purdue and Purdue Global, where again and again and again, persistence pays off. Welcome to everyone. I'm Dr. Frank Dooley, Chancellor of Purdue University Global. Whether you're with us on campus or participating from home, let me be the first to welcome you to our 17th commencement ceremony. I th Would everyone please rise for the presentation of colors, the national anthem, and then the retiring of the colors. Colors. All. Freeze that. Arms. Oh, say can you see? Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof. 
Please be seated and join me in recognizing and thanking the Purdue Air Force Depat Detachment 220 Honor Guard. You certainly make us proud. I'd also like to thank Carrie Brusso, who joins us from Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida, where she's a performer. That doesn't surprise us after hearing her, right? Carrie is graduating today with high honors for her Master's of Business Administration degree. Her family's here to celebrate her accomplishment, and I bet they're extra proud as it was a surprise to them that Carrie was singing today. Thank you, Carrie. Now I'd like to take a moment to introduce the dedicated members of our university administration and keynote speaker who are joining today's celebration. And I'm gonna ask them to stand when I announce their name and stay standing. And then guests, let's hold our applause till they're all standing. Mr. Michael Berghoff, Chairman of the Board. Dr. Meng Chang, President of Purdue University, which means he's my boss, okay? So. Dr. Paul Bott, Board of Trustees. Mr. Neil Hoyne, Board of Trustees. Dr. John Harbour, Provost. Dr. Judy Lewandowski, Vice Provost. Dr. Carolyn Nordstrom, Chief Administrative Officer. Dr. Tiffany Townsend, Vice President of Organizational Culture and Chief Diversity Officer. Dean and Vice President of Concord Law School, Mr. Martin Pritikin, JD. Dean and Vice President of the School of Nursing, Dr. Melissa Birdie. Dean and Vice President of the School of General Education, Dr. Jody DeCourt. Dean and Vice President of the School of Business and Information Technology, Dr. Jeff Buck. Our Mace Bearer, Faculty Senate President and Professor, Dr. Ginger Cameron. And our keynote speaker, Lauren Castrinos Bradford, Purdue Global Alumnus Class of 2020. Thank you for joining us. Please be seated. I'd also like to take a moment to ask the dedicated members of our faculty and school administration from Concord Law School and the Schools of Business and Information Technology, General Education and Nursing to please stand and be recognized Thank you for joining us, so please stand. And last but not least, with the Purdue Global and Purdue University staff who are assisting in implementing this memorable occasion for us today, please stand or wave so we can say thank you to you as well. Now as we start, I want to share that earlier this week we had our Higher Learning Commission visit and they, during that time they spoke with students and faculty, the board members and others, and I just want to share their one key finding which they shared with us on Tuesday. Purdue Global's culture is laser focused on student success. It is amazing and inspiring, all right? And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make that a testament to that insight. We're gonna make this day amazing and inspiring. So hang on. Now, I wanna introduce our president, Dr. Meng Chang, and he wants to share with you some sentiments. Dr. Chang. Good morning. It's my distinct pleasure to offer warm congratulations to each of you on your graduation from Purdue Global. Like generations of Boilermakers before you, and more than 11,000 Purdue Global graduates in the last year, you have completed your degrees with determination and persistence. Many of you have done so while also working full-time jobs, taking care of your children and family, or serving our country. That is no easy accomplishment, and I hope few, you feel a sense of pride, just as I do, for a job well done. 
The education uplifts people's lives, including my own families. Due to circumstances in life, my father could not start his higher learning until his 50s. He started by earning an associate degree at a community college in California and went on to earn his bachelor's and master's degrees. I was there for his first graduation, and that was the proudest moment in my own life as well. Today, there are more than 40 million Americans with some college credentials but not a degree. Under the leadership of Chancellor Dooley, and the entire faculty, staff, and the board at Purdue Global, we are determined to provide a high-quality solution to that challenge, one that is backed by Purdue University. Many of you are celebrating how you came back to earn your degree. Now you will move forward into new chapters of your personal and professional lives. As you celebrate today, with your family and friends, I welcome you to the loyal Boilermaker alumni family and look forward to watching your continued success. So boiler up, hammer down, and hail our Purdue. Thank you, Dr. Chang. And his father's story is very similar to many of those of you graduating today. I'm delighted we're able to celebrate here on campus where the history of Purdue began over 150 years ago. This has been my home for the last 25 years. Both of my daughters graduated with Purdue degrees and next week I'm gonna be back on stage to award my younger daughter her master's degree. I hope those in the audience get the opportunity to experience campus and celebrate among our Purdue family. I'm thrilled that over 8,500 people affiliated, affiliated with Purdue Global are on campus this weekend between our graduations. Your guests, your family, the faculty, the staff, you know, it feels pretty special and I, I hope you noticed the weather. We ordered this up just for you, right? Uh, as students, you told us you wanted commencement here on campus. I get that. Not only is this a beautiful campus with so much rich history and tradition, but you get to experience the place that backs your university and your degree. If you haven't done so already, I do hope you take the chance, the opportunity to walk around, pose for some pictures, Walk in Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon. This is over by the Armstrong building, which is that way. Or the bell tower, it's just a short walk from here where we are in Elliott Hall. We are so grateful to be able to provide a ceremony that brings us all together, no matter where we are around the globe, either virtually or here in the Elliott Hall of Music. Graduates, it's quite remarkable. At the day's ceremonies, you represent almost every state. Last night at the, the Boilermaker reception, I mean, I met people who drove here from Great Falls, Montana, Fort Knox, Kentucky, South Carolina. I mean, you're from all over the country, virtually every state. I met somebody from the Bahamas, Bermuda, Canada. There you are, right? You're very shy too, right? No. We also have graduates from China, Guatemala, South Africa, and the United Kingdom. I love that we can remain close through this institution as we recognize your accomplishments today. Now, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and suggest graduates, you are amazing. I'm just gonna say that to start, but you didn't get here on your own. You didn't get to this momentous day by yourself because balancing school, work, and life is not an easy task. You leaned on family, friends, your children, co-workers for encouragement and support throughout your journey at Purdue Global. Let's take a moment to thank your support system and show them our appreciation. You're also fortunate to have this great support system during your journey. 
We are honored that our Purdue Global Student Body includes over 5,100 active duty, National Guard and Reserve military members serving around the globe, over 1,400 family members, and over 3,000 veterans. That's almost 10,000 of our students affiliated with the military. Would each of you Would everyone in the audience today who is an active service member or a veteran, that's both graduates and everyone else, would you please stand? Active service or veterans, please stand. Thank you so much for your service. And I think you guys are starting to get the vibe here. This is a celebration today, so we're, we're here to have some fun. And we're here to appreciate people. We're here to enjoy this day, all right? Now, while I'm at it, let me share a little bit about what makes your class and your alma mater so remarkable. Will the graduates who are attending today as a first generation graduate please rise and then stay standing. And this means you are the first in your family to attend college and complete your degree. Would you please rise? All right, stay up. No, you don't get to sit up. Stay up. Almost half of our students are first generation. And just so you know, I'm a first gen grad myself, as are several others on the stage with me. Will a graduate who held her job or were in the service while attending school please rise and remain standing? And if you're already standing, raise your right hand. One more, one more. Will the graduates who cared for a child or other dependent while obtaining a degree please rise, remain standing. For those already standing, please raise your left hand if this applies to you. Right hand, left hand, yeah. I think we just said who we are, all right? It's about half of you caring for a child or a dependent. You can sit down now. In addition to all of you standing and now sitting before us today, we want to recognize the over 11,000 Purdue Global graduates who obtained their degree in this past year. What you have done is remarkable. You completed your education while dealing with everything that life threw your way. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get to where you are, and you should be incredibly proud. Now, it is my distinct honor to introduce our commencement speaker, Lauren Castrinas Bradford. Lauren is a Purdue Global alumnus. She graduated in 2020 with her Master of Science in Psychology degree. She's joined here by her husband, Keegan, who's in the audience with a big smile on his face, and they have two boys watching from home. Lauren, please join us. Welcome, everyone especially the class of 2023, to your Purdue Global graduation ceremony. My name is Lauren Castrinas Bradford, and in the midst of COVID, I earned a master's degree in psychology when I graduated virtually with the Purdue Global class of 2020. I live in South Carolina with my husband of 12 years, Keegan, and our two little boys who are nothing alike. Six-year-old Finley is the wild one with not much self-preservation and will do anything to get a laugh. At not even two years old, he was driving his Power Wheels Jeep just as well as his older brother. Dexter is our cautious and quiet nine-year-old 
who instead of climbing everything in sight at three years old, preferred to make us ketchup and mustard lattes out of his playhouse. I earned a bachelor's degree in psychology from Clemson University the month before Keegan and Mai's wedding and soon started my career in applied behavior analysis working with children with autism. More commonly referred to as ABA, it is a way to positively shape a person's behavior for them to reach their fullest potential. I worked in the clinic and home settings with families for more than two years until the day before Dexter was born, having no idea the impact my professional experience would later have. Dexter was born with a long rap sheet of medical complications, including a facial paralysis that required hourly treatments for more than the first five years of his life, in addition to numerous surgeries and countless doctor's visits over the years. During this time, I put my career on hold and assumed the role of a stay-at-home mom so I could be home to properly care for Dexter. Seven years later, Dexter would be diagnosed with autism. Because of my background in ABA, I knew this diagnosis would eventually come, and I was determined to not only be Dexter's biggest advocate, but also his loudest cheerleader. I'm from South Carolina, where we love big SUVs and country music my personal Southern vices being Chevy Tahoe's and Luke Bryan. Finley was born when Dexter was two and a half years old. Just before Finley was born, I told my husband that we needed a bigger car, and for years I had my sights set on a Tahoe. He said, absolutely not until you make more money in a year than a Tahoe cost. <laughs> Y'all, Tahoes are expensive. One that's over two years old still costs almost double the average yearly income of most people living in South Carolina. I was a stay-at-home mom at the time, so we both knew that was not going to happen. Fast forward two years later, we now have two kids in preschool, so I was constantly loading them in and out of the car every day. During this time, we were back and forth between our home in South Carolina and Dexter's surgeon in Baltimore with a two and four year old in tow multiple times a year. Cue those thoughts of the Tahoe again. While I was filling out that last preschool admission form, I read this quote, in a year, you'll wish you had started now. Although I didn't want to admit it, it was true. Reminiscing, there were a lot of things I wished I had started or not giving up, knowing the impact they could have later. Grad school, taking better care of myself, rekindling friendships, learning to cook because little did we know COVID was approaching and Outback was not going to let us into their dining room to eat dinner. All these things I wish I'd done, but at the time I didn't understand the impact they could make. The stay at home mom life was quickly coming to an end and it was time for me to decide if I was returning to either work or grad school. I chose grad school because I knew in the long run it would be the best choice for my family. Grad school was something I had thought about since finishing undergrad. I never did, and I wished I had. During our family vacation in June of 2019, I was sitting on the floor of our room at Great Wolf Lodge when I received my acceptance email into Purdue Global's master's program and would be starting in a few months. The reality of attending grad school and being a stay-at-home mom started to creep in. Could I actually pull this off? Dexter's next surgery was in Baltimore. It was scheduled just three months away, with at least two more to follow, along with the necessary post-op visits. This meant a lot of time traveling and living out of hotel and hospital rooms. Knowing how busy the coming years of surgeries would be, I felt like the perfect time would never come. After having thought about the decision to apply for so long, I made the call to Purdue Global to push my start date up, and I attended my first class the very next week. With surgeries planned, why would I start sooner knowing I'd be in lectures and writing papers from a hospital room 560 miles from home? Because I knew it was time to stop making excuses and not wait any longer. As I was reminded of that quote, in a year, you'll wish you had started now. A month after the boys started school, I had made the usual preparations for yet another hospital stay in Baltimore, but this was our first trip with me attending grad school. Thankfully, Dexter did amazing, 
Finley kept us entertained and things continued to go well and we made another trip to Baltimore in January of 2020. COVID hit two months later and I was not only doing grad school virtually, but like so many of you, I was also doing preschool and kindergarten virtually with my little boys. Who else spent the spring and fall of 2020 trying to get your kids to pay attention to a teacher on a screen? I wanted to quit or at least take a break, but we all know how those breaks usually end. I knew a year later I would look back at whatever decision I had made with either regret or pride. My boys were watching me study, respond to discussion posts, take exams, and often struggle with no sleep because the option to do all of those things were, while they were in school was now gone. But whether I succeeded or I failed, they were watching. Remember, I told y'all I love Mason Luke Bryan. When his latest album came out, my life, sh my life quote shifted from in a year, you'll wish you had started now, to some dreams you chase and some dreams you catch. I kept chasing that dream of finishing grad school, and in November of 2020, I caught that dream. I felt accomplished having earned a master's degree, but a piece of paper and two more letters behind my name were not going to buy a Tahoe. My time with Purdue Global prepared me to spend the next year earning the required clinical hours at one of the top ABA companies in South Carolina to sit for the Behavior Analyst Board exam in January of 2022. With Luke Bryan's latest album, Born Here, Live Here, Die Here, Blaring in the Car, I headed to the testing center to come face to face with a life-changing dream I had been chasing for years. For anyone who will be taking an exam at a testing center, let me tell you this. They don't say congratulations or better luck next time. When they hand you that printout, it is folded and accompanied with, have a good day. So with nervous anticipation and a folded paper in hand, I finally made it to the parking lot and called Keegan. I unfolded the paper and I saw those four life-changing letters after my name, BCBA, Board Certified Behavior Analyst. That was it, the dream I thought I would never catch. <laughs> Thank you guys. That was it. The dream I thought that I would never catch was now sitting in my hands. I am a board certified behavior analyst. I landed my dream job three months later and I now work with kids via, with autism via telehealth, affording me the opportunity to care for Finley and Dexter regardless of where we travel in our Tahoe. <laughs> Today, you all have caught your own dream you've been chasing for two years, four years, maybe even longer. But don't stop here. Keep chasing more of those seemingly impossible dreams because in a year, you'll wish you had started now. Congratulations, Purdue Global Class of 2023. Thank you, Lauren. I, it's so inspiring to hear from my alumni about their careers and accomplishments and experiences and families and your Tahoe, right? <laughs> Graduates like Lauren, you continually persisted in your pursuit of completing your studies and earning your degree. The stories that you share with us show us that every day. You've had your comeback and are on to the next chapter of your lives and your careers. And now graduates, as we continue this celebration, I'd like to take a moment to highlight some of your accomplishments. Recently, we launched the Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning. One part of that center is an award called the Achievement for Community Engagement and Service, or ACES. The ACES Award provides students with the opportunity to be recognized for engaging in volunteer activities in their community. I'm delighted to highlight our graduates who have achieved the following status. Platinum level status is Anna Flynn and Tina Turner. <laughs> S 
Silver level status recipients are Nancy Ellis and Karina Roberts. And our bronze level status recipient, Jessica Hales. Thank you for dedicating. Yes. Thank you for dedicating countless hours to your communities. Now to more highlights of our outstanding graduates. Will the doctoral candidates please rise? Now you might notice it's only a few of them, but only 2% of our nation's population have a doctoral degree. This is quite the accomplishment, right? We'll get you back up here in a few minutes, all right. Will the master's candidates please rise? Congratulations to you. The master's graduates make up about 9% of the nation's population. And as a special congratulations to the master's and doctoral nursing students if they're wearing the white and gold cord that symbolizes a very high GPA. Congratulations. Please be seated. We're also proud to recognize graduates who've earned academic honors by achieving high cumulative grade point averages in their associates or bachelor's programs. If you're a graduate who earned cum laude honors, please rise. And this means you're wearing the white cords to recognize that achievement. There we are. And please be seated. Will the graduates who earn magna cum laude honors please rise? <laughs> These graduates have earned a high cumulative GPA of at least a 3.8, and they're wearing silver cords to recognize their achievement. <laughs> well done. Please be seated. Um, you've probably already figured out you're going to get gold cords next. For our graduates who have demonstrated exemplary ability and discipline by earning A's in every course, our summa cum laude graduates, would you please rise and show off those gold cords? Huh? I'll simply tell you, when I was a student, I had more letters in the alphabet on my, my transcript. Uh, congratulations on your achievement. All right, graduates, today is a day to celebrate you. And finishing a degree brings a flurry of emotions. And we've captured some of your sentiments because we thought it would be a meaningful reminder of all that you've accomplished to get to where you are today. We'd love to see your smiling faces and you might see a familiar face or two as you look at the photos coming through. All right, it's time for the reason we're all here today, to recognize and award degrees. All right, let's do this, all right. Now I'm gonna start by recognizing over 400 of our graduates who are participating virtually from around the world today. So graduates joining from home, please rise so I can formally recognize you for your degree. Exercising the authority of the trustees of Purdue University Global, legally vested by the people of the state of Indiana and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I now confer upon each of you the doctoral Masters, bachelors, associates, or certificate with all of the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities of that degree. Congratulations to our virtual graduates. Ashley Adams. April Adcock. Mary Afrié. 
Melinda Aguilera Daje Ajiyi Petra Allen Calvert Nedlick Alakoa, U.S. Army Florine Alston Olayinka Aluku Nora Anwar Vanessa May Arneo, U.S. Air Force Rhoda Ashby Kayla Askew, U.S. Air Force Melanie Agello Cynthia Oric Stephanie Avery Tatlin Bailey, U.S. Army Heather Baker Jennifer Baker Alimu Balde Keon Baldwin Colby Balkarin Amina Banu Rebecca Barr Suzanne Bastarash Amos Batiste, U.S. Army Veteran Jamie Bauer Malandraki Jessica Beedling Vanessa Becerra Alisea Natalie Bednarek Chadwick Bedwell Tavana Bennett Lorraine Besidenout Stacy Blanco Carrie Bolduc Sarah Buda Nathan Bowman, U.S. Army Deborah Brass Anderson Jennifer Brethauer Matt Briones Marlon Brooks, U.S. Navy Emily Brown Joey Brown, U.S. Air Force Veteran Natina Brown Helen Buckley, U.S. Army Veteran Destiny Bush Deborah Burns Nicholas Byron Deborah Cadigan Lisa Caldwell, U.S. Air Force Katira Campbell, U.S. Army Yuri Canavasciolo Christina Cardin Belinda Chambliss Jacob Chase, U.S. Army Cameron Cherapan Anthony Cheslack Brittany Church Robert Sividanez Carlton Clark, U.S. Marines Chastity Clark Caleb Coleman Tanita Coleman Brianna Commander Lisa Cook Michelle Kuhn Erica Corder Ronaldo Cordero Wendy Courtney Mason Cowan, U.S. Army Andrea Craig Jaralise Cruz Wendy Culver Joseph Currens Tara Kusumino Stephen Dean, U.S. Army Olivia Delamos Christian Delgado Ramos, U.S. Air Force Veteran
Melissa Lee Delas. Mascon Desay. Samantha Dedinger. Victoria Dar. Henry Diaz. Alicia Dixon. Patricia Dolan. Lavon Dunn. Tremaine Durham. Keith Duval. Crystal Dye. Conray Eccles. Donna Egner. Tyler Ellenwood. Taylor Ellard, U.S. Navy. Heather Elliott. Miriam Erickson. Jacqueline Irvin. Heather Espinosa, U.S. Army veteran. Elisa Evans. Lisa Everett. Harley Failgout. Melissa Fallon. Danielle Felder. Douglas Fields, U.S. Army. Gwendolyn Fields. Laura Fitzpatrick. Kristen Ford. Lauren Fort, U.S. Army veteran. Dayton Foster. Lucia Foster. Michaela Franklin. Jessica Freider. Jody Frisbee. Zachary Frizzle. Samantha Ferdaw, U.S. Air Force. Tirso Galindo, U.S. Army veteran. Mackenzie Gonsman. Viviana Garcia. LaShonda Gaston. Annie Garoniak. Benjamin Geis. Tiffany Gibbons, U.S. Air Force. Victoria Gibson. Jake Gill, U.S. Marines. Talia Gilliam. Erica Giovanelli DeMott. Rachel Goldenstein. Daisy Gomez, U.S. Army. Jessica Gulishian. Denise Grant. Nicholas Graves. Stephen Gray, U.S. Air Force. Joseph Graziano. April Grigsby. Bonnie Grimes. Kelia Guerrero. Nicole Hadley. Elizabeth Haggerty, U.S. Army. Kristen Haynes. Tyon Hairston. Jason Hale. Kelsey Hall, U.S. Army. Lucas Hammer. Brittany Hardbarger. Janelle Harju. Karina Harris. Corinne Harris Cock. Amoria Harrison. Mahogany Hawkins. Pamela Hayes. Brandon Hebink. Maritza Hernandez. Clarissa Hoyer. Joanne Hayen, U.S. Navy veteran.
Rebecca Higginbottom, Jennifer Higgins, Alice Hill, Jacob Hogadkamp, U.S. Army, Michelle Holes, Laura Hawley, Brennan Holmes, Victoria Horn, Sally Houghton, Michelle Hover, Marshall Howell, U.S. Army, Miracle Hurt, Jamie Insko, Chastity Jackson, Najay Jackson, Shelly Jans, Jennifer Lynn Haravada, U.S. Army, Brendan Jenkins, Christopher Jisu Uba, Nanoshka Jimenez, U.S. Army, Brittany Johnson, John Johnson, Ryan Johnson, U.S. Army. Ashley Jones, U.S. Air Force. Delana Jones. Heather Jordan. Yanel Joseph. Alexis Kazar. Ula Kamal Maz. Kelly Kawa. Erica Keefe, Amanda Keller, Carrie Kelham, Michelle Kennett, Joe Kim, Sean Kim, Christopher Kimsey, U.S. Army veteran. Sai Kong, U.S. Army. Ashley Kozane. Tiffany Kozane. Jovanina Kronke. William Lapointe, U.S. Army veteran. Jory Lanier Hayes. Rachel Lavea. Adam Lawson, U.S. Marines veteran. Cassandra Leach. Isaiah Leak, U.S. Army veteran. David Lee. Robert Leigh Jr., U.S. Army veteran. Justice Levy, U.S. Army. Derek Lewis. Aaron Licklider, U.S. Army. Thomas Lightbody, U.S. Navy. Nicholas Lindbergh, U.S. Navy veteran. Wendy Linton, U.S. Army. Kathleen Larrakis. Danielle Loyacano. Victoria Locke. Jennifer Lopes. Jordan Lott, U.S. Air Force veteran. Khalil Lucero, U.S. Army. Jasmine Lynn, U.S. Air Force. Daniel Mack. Nori Majors. Libby Manning. Treon Manson, U.S. Army. Erica Maroney. Latanya Martin, Kimberly Matthews, Tierra Maxwell, Pamela May, Mary McCall, Tanisha McAskill, Timothy McDowell, U.S. Navy veteran, Kara McAvoy. 
John McMahon. Destiny McQuaid, U.S. Army. Dinesha Medina, U.S. Air Force veteran. John Medina, U.S. Army. Tamara Mendez, U.S. Army. Nicole Mendoza. Dylan Merriman. Lolly Menier. Alexander Myers. Mackenzie Milks. Monjoyce Miller, U.S. Army veteran. Heather Miner. Clarissa Mings. Kashmir Minosa, U.S. Army. Avi Mizrahi. Elysia Moeller. Tyler Molinaro. Betty Montoya. Ashley Moore. Edashane Moore, U.S. Army. Neil DeMora. Monique Morales Mason. Anthony Moorhead, U.S. Air Force. Juan Morera. Katricia Mosley. Robert Muket. Megan Meyer, U.S. Army. Cassandra Nadin. Jean Paula Nadonga. Andrew Nazario. Cynthia Ann Neely. Rhonda Nemery. Carla Nicholas, U.S. Navy. Timothy Nicholas, U.S. Army. Sabrina Nickerson. Jenna Nine. Markeisha Noble. Bobby Okoronko, U.S. Army. Hector Ortiz. Ivan Padron, U.S. Army veteran. Victoria Padwani. Parmita Palroy. Winad Kumar Palanavel. Amanda Palomino. Alexander Palombis. Emma Paradise. Shelby Parga. Andrea Park. Jennifer Parker. Megan Parcel. Farzan Pashmaki. David Patrick Jr. Hannah Patton. Anise Peacher. Tsunami Pena. Michael Piscina, U.S. Marines. Jasmine Peters. Rishandra Pfeiffer, U.S. Army veteran. Marianka Phillips. Catherine Pihutsky. Nicole Pierce. Justin Polzine, U.S. Army. Valencia Palmer. Wendy Poole. Summer Popkiss. Robin Porter. Naomi Puglisi. Mary Ratto. Rhoda Reddix. Charles Reed, U.S. Army. Kiana Reed. Scott Raster. Jamie Renville. Katie Reamer. Chelsea Rhoda. 
Nicole Rodas, Zachary Ridiger, Johanny Rivera, Courtney Rivera, Amy Roberts, Brittany Roberts, Karina Roberts, Tiffany Roberts, Kimberly Robinson, Aaron Rodriguez, U.S. Army, Carla Rodriguez, Jamie Rooney, Eunice Rosado Almanzar, Daniel Ross, U.S. Air Force veteran, Stephen Rowell, U.S. Army, Taylor Rudisil, Victoria Russo, Heather Saban, Michelle K. Saiki Poaha, U.S. Army, Amy Saldivar, Alyssa Sale, Michelle Sanchez, Sophia Sanchez, Susan Sands, Kristen Socher, Deborah Shvanius, U.S. Army veteran, Annie Schmidt, Yasmin Schmidt, U.S. Army veteran, Matthew Schnabel, Elizabeth C. Juing Show, Molly Shrewsbury, Annalise Skimmyhorn, Simone Slater, Alexia Smith, U.S. Navy, Brittany Smith, Bryce Smith, U.S. Army, Sydney Smith, Terry Smith, Christopher Spain, U.S. Army, Victoria Spriggs, U.S. Navy, Charity Stillwell, Rhonda Stone, Evan Summers, U.S. Army, Amanda Swanson, Katrina Swihart, Joel Tackett, Deinera Tanner, Sequoia Thomas, Tori Thomas, Sherelle Thompson, Roy Thompson, Lillian Tijerina, Kendra Todd, David Torres, Melody Torres, Jacqueline Torres Centeles, U.S. Army veteran, Alexandra Toto, Susan Toy, U.S. Army veteran, Train Tran, Sylvia Trejo, U.S. Army, Tyling Tu, Jimmy Tucker Jr. Malin Tung, Alyssa Valdez, William Valentine, U.S. Army, Bradley Van Ness, Lisa Vandersloot, Ashley Vang, U.S. Army, Victor Vasquez, U.S. Army, Albert Velasquez, Sarah Vickers, Zamir Vialba, Hannah Villarreal, U.S. Army veteran, Perry Vitaioli, U.S. Navy veteran, 
Maria Vorobeva. Jeffrey Wadsworth, U.S. Air Force. Sarah Waller. Kevin Walls. Richard Warner, U.S. Army. Tanya Waters. Tamika Webb, U.S. Army Veteran. Jill Weedman. Brooklyn Welch. Yushonda Wells. Caitlin White, U.S. Navy. Emma Wilden. D'Angela Williams. Jennifer Williams. Malia Williams. Salida Williams Ross. Justin Wilmot, U.S. Army. Elizabeth Wilson. Samantha Wilson. Veronica Wilson. Kristen Wiltshire. Lauren Wintrode. Holly Wamachka. Sonia Woods. Stephanie Waldridge. Amy Warden. Randall Ray. Cassandra Wright. Jonathan Wright, U.S. Navy. Madeline Wright, U.S. Army. Victoria Young. Zaria Young. Sharon Zyman. We're nearing the finish line, right? Just one last instruction, family and friends, please remain seated and keep the aisles clear until the faculty and all the graduates have exited the theater. It's graduate now instead of candidate, that's pretty cool. You can meet your graduate outside after the ceremony near the fountain, so it's just out those doors, and we invite you to join us to celebrate at the Boilermaker Block Party. Now, one last thing. It's time for the ceremonial tassel turning. Candidates, please rise. Graduates from home, please put on your cap and tassel if you haven't done so already. As the Chancellor of Purdue University Global, I now invite you to participate in the tradition that will signify your new status. Graduates, as you are now a part of the graduating class of Purdue University Global, you may change your tassel to the left side of your mortarboard. Congratulations.